solid millennial. I'm talking late 80s, baby. And I'm personally glad my mom liked the name Sierra because I'm sure I would have probably been Sarah otherwise. Not that there's anything wrong with the name Sarah, but if you're an 80s or 90s kid, then there were probably a lot of Sarahs and Britneys and Stephanies, Nicole's, Ashley's, pretty common names and all of them lovely. Likely why we have such tragedies now. Anywho, I'm grateful that I grew up in an environment that celebrated and saw value in art. I didn't realize this as a kid because, well, I was an ungrateful little shit like most adolescents. What can I say? Looking back, I can see how lucky I was. One area that I was really lucky in that's loud and clear for me now is the music space. Sure, I grew up in the burbs. My hometown was the definition of the burbs when I was growing up. And with that came some cultural or societal influences that may or may not have been simply due to circumstance. But I also came from a family that listened to a wide range of music. My paternal grandpa was a man of jazz and classical music. He's also the person who really invested in my reading, which I promise I'll tell the story of because it's pretty adorable if you ask me. He's why I really appreciate a score and composers, two of my favorite modern composers. Amin Dajawadi, House of the Dragon, Game of Thrones, Westworld, Nicholas Bertel, Succession. My mom listened to oldies, which is what they were to me as a kid, like Donna Summer, Cool in the Gang. She also gave me an appreciation for country music. My college roommates, Jesse, Mindy, and Sam can attest to that, as well as my still besties, Rachel and Mindy. <laughs> I know I have an unapologetic love of country music and I will die on the hill that No Fences by Garth Brooks is one of the best albums of all time. Hands down, one of the best albums. My dad opened me up to bands like the Allman Brothers and Fleetwood Mac. He had a huge record collection, including Madonna with Holiday, which I did not realize was valuable as a child. He came home one time to find me playing it and scratching the record saying, look dad, I'm a DJ. I am so sorry, dad. Love you. He's also the one who played Nine Inch Nails closer, but I stand by that being an absolute banger. I had friends who introduced me to quote unquote electronic music and raves. And of course, I was the emo, screamo, and pop punk kid. Yellow card to something corporate, matchbook romance, thrice, senses fail. I listened to it all. Yes, I was at Warp Tour because again, I am a millennial. I'm truly so grateful. I was exposed to so many different forms of music. And it's with this love of art that I was inspired to talk about some of the songs that are a little older, but in my opinion, they still go hard. These are in no particular order outside of how they came to me. I have created a Spotify playlist with them, which I've linked in the description. You're welcome. Now on to the music. Going back for my millennials, Gen X, and possibly even some young boomers. We gotta start with Nirvana. Smells like teen spirit. You know you just wanna jump around and thrash a little bit. The way it builds and crescendos, the beauty. We'll move a little bit into some pop punk because there are a few songs that I think transcend the genre and one of them is Paramore's Misery Business. I never meant to break two, but here we are. I also recognize that this is Quite possibly a very regional recommendation, which I fully accept, but Yellow Card, Way Away, it just felt so fresh at the time. It was loud and exciting, and I'm pretty sure it was my personal gateway into pop punk. Oh no, that's a lie because Blink-182 was there, but oh well. Rounding out my pop punk for today is Senses Fail, Still Searching. I believe this was my most played song on Spotify for like three years in a row because that's how much I love it. It's also a solid go-to when I'm in the middle of a long run and I need to like pick it up or I'm pushing through because I'm starting to get tired. Maybe that's also why it was one of my top songs. Speaking of songs that I enjoy when I'm working out, I do love some EDM. <laughs> and when I'm in the middle of a tough workout, 
One of my personal favorites is Kill the Noise. Kill the Noise part one. It has a slow build and it's just shy of eight minutes long. And I can get through most of a mile with this when I need that extra oomph at the end of like an eight mile run. I don't know if it was my former college friends or honestly my dad who introduced me to Deadmau5. Ghosts and stuff with Rob Swine. Another one where I can go in on the song and I'm just zoned out when I'm working out. Having grown up in Northern California, I have a slight bias towards some Bay Area classics, such as Keep the Sneak, Super High Beat, Mac Dre, Get Stupid, and Mr. Fab and Company, New Oakland. Turn one of those on somewhere and you will immediately know someone is from the Bay, surrounding areas, or has someone in their life that introduced them to Bay Area rap. I promise, I promise. It is an immediate identifier. And excellent music, you ask me. I do live in New York, so I'm gonna switch it up just a little bit. And I have to stand behind Notorious Thugs being an absolute slapper. Have you listened to it? Bone Thugs and Notorious B.I.G. You can't tell me with a straight face that song doesn't hit. I might have been mostly raised in California, but that doesn't mean I don't appreciate music from other places. And that influence also extends to Selena y Los Dinos. Yes, love Selena. And this played at the wedding I went to, and anytime I hear it, I am on the floor singing along. Suavamente. Amazing. What type of girly would I be if I didn't include some of my favorite pop songs, starting with S&M? Y'all, that song is amazing, and I know you agree. There might be some issues around this group. I maintain that buttons by Pussycat Dolls will have any woman over the age of 35 dancing like rent is due tomorrow. And an underrated ensemble song, Patron Tequila by the Paradiso Girls. Now I could be biased because um, I am pretty sure that song came out when I was 21. So it goes along with things that are mostly fuzzy in my brain at this point, if I have any memory of them at all, because it's also where my shame is. I could truly keep going, but I'm gonna stop here for now. So question for you, using the filter of songs that are older than 10 years old, what's a song that you stand behind as being an absolute banger? Drop it in the comments because I wanna know. We can add this to the playlist, we can build on it. I want to know. Thanks again for watching this. And if you enjoyed this video and would like to see more content like this, Go ahead, please like this video, leave a comment, share it, let me know. Now I'm gonna go listen to this playlist and have a journey through time. Thanks friends.